Hello Year 10. We're continuing today to look at factors influencing migration. Last lesson we looked at the exodus the movement. Today we're going to look at something called the Oklahoma land rush of 1889. And the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is just watch a bit of video stimulus. You're probably going to have to open this clip separately in YouTube or you're going to have to open it from the saved attachment. I don't think it'll work if you're just watching this straight from uh, the uh, Firefly homepage. But anyway, watch the video and then come back to the next slide. Okay, so hopefully you've watched that film and it's a clip from a film that tries to recreate the excitement and the drama of what became known in American history as the Oklahoma land rush. So we're just going to put some context on this for you and just explain how those events came about. So, in 1830, the Indian Removal Act established an Indian territory in the West, in what is now the state of Oklahoma. And on my map, you can see that inside the red circle. So the tribes that were forcibly removed from the East were given not all of this land, but part of this land. But the US government kept hold of land in the middle of the territory. But in 1887, the US government decided to re reorganize the land. The US government recognized that it had given a huge amount of land to these Eastern tribes, and some of that land was very valuable. So the US government wanted it back, really. So the US government removed ownership of the land from the tribes and just allocated each individual Indian family 160 acres. So this was sneaky. This meant there was now lots of unallocated land that could be claimed by whites. And the US government also decided to open the land in the middle of the territory to white settlers. So basically in 1887, the US government looked at the Indian territories, looked at how vast that land was, looked at how valuable that land was, and then passed acts to take away the land from the Native Americans and get a process up and running whereby they could allocate land to white settlers. So we're going to look at just how that transpired on the next slide. So in 1889, the government said that from 12 noon on the 22nd of April, the Indian land now available could be claimed and bought from the government. And when the boundary was opened up, many white settlers rushed to grab the land they wanted. This was called a land rush. So if you look at the images we've got, we've got Indian land for sale. So the government advertised that this was going to happen. The government set a time when it would happen, the 22nd of April at 12 noon. So people amassed just on the border with the Indian territories. And it became a race into the territories, a race to get and make a claim on the best land that was now newly available. That's what we saw in the video. So there were seven land rushes between 1889 and 1893. The biggest was in 1893, when eight million acres of land called the Cherokee Land Strip was opened up for a white settlement on the Indian territories. So by 1907, Oklahoma's population, remember this had been exclusively Indian territory, so its white population was enough for it to be admitted as the 46th state of the Union. Remember, uh, in the United States, you had to have a certain level of population before your territory could be considered to be a state with a state government and state legislate, legislation and all of those things. So if we move on to the next slide. 
Okay, our task is simple. We do need to have some detailed notes about what the Oklahoma land rush was. So we're going to use the information on the previous slides to write summary notes on why the Oklahoma land rush was important in US history. So you need to include notes on the background, you need to include notes on the key events, and obviously some notes on the results of the land rush in terms of settlement and the future of the Indian Territory and Oklahoma. Once you've done that, that's today's lesson. Well done.